Hi guys, welcome back to our Floco Tutorials for Absolute Beginner series. This is a first video in a series of USB communication tutorials. We're gonna start with a quick introduction to USB. Then we're gonna discuss some few USB device classes supported by Flowcode. We're gonna start with a USB communication device or USB serial. Then USB human interface device or HID. We're gonna also use the new feature in Flowcode 9, the app developer to quickly and easily create Windows program to control and monitor devices connected to your embedded systems locally via USB, RS-232, Bluetooth or remote devices anyway with RS-485, LAN, Wi-Fi, TCP, IP and much more. It has been an hectic year with COVID-19 ravaging the whole world. We haven't released new videos in a while now, but we are now back and you can expect new videos regularly every week on this channel. This is the right time to learn new skills and in partnership with Matrix, we are offering you a special 20% discount to buy or upgrade your flow code. This offer is applicable to any of the flow code packs to get advantage of the new features released in flow code V9. We will also get a percentage on each cell, so in this way you will also be supporting us to release more tutorials. Please check out in the description of this video to get your discount code or you can contact us for more information. If this is the first video you've watched on this channel, welcome to Student Companion Electronics. We provide embedded programming tutorials for absolute beginners on various hardware platforms like 8-bit, 16-bit or 32-bit PIC microcontrollers, AVR, ARM, Arduino, Raspberry Pi or ESP32. To learn more or download the source code used in our videos, check out the link to our website in the description of this video. If you have questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please let us know in the comments below or in the forum on our website. So, let us get started. USB is an asynchronous serial communication protocol and it stands for Universal Serial Bus. Before USB, there were too many different port types, like the serial port that once used to be very popular on personal computers and other hardware compliant to the RS-232 standard, like modems or similar communication devices. This port is also known as DB9 connector or COM port. The parallel port, mostly associated with the printer port, found mostly on personal computers in the past, but virtually not existent today. The PS2 port, once popular also in the past on keyboard and mice. The SCSI connector, just to mention a few. The USB was designed to replace those myriad of connectors found on personal computers in the 1990s. The primary motivation was to allow peripherals to be automatically configured when they are plugged into a PC, often referred to as plug and play. With USB, you can simply plug a new USB peripheral and the host will immediately recognize it, like plugging a keyboard into your PC while it's already running, there is no problem. In the past, with a PS2 keyboard, you had to reboot the PC for it to be recognized. Some of the old connectors, like the parallel port, had so many connectors it was taking a significant port space on the motherboard. This can become really expensive if you want to implement multiple peripherals. Shortly after being introduced, USB port quickly replaced the legacy connectors on most PCs. Today, USB has grown beyond PCs to become the common interface for many embedded industrial and consumer products like in cameras, headphones, printers and many more. So let us look at a typical USB system. USB is an asynchronous serial protocol, which means there is no dedicated clock line. A USB system is unidirectional communication consisting of a single USB host 
and multiple peripheral USB devices connected to a T8 star topology. If more than one device is present, we can include hubs in the tiers to expand the number of USB port. USB hubs can extend a USB network to a maximum of 127 ports. A USB is an addressable bus line with up to 7-bit address code. This can support up to 127 devices. The address 0 is not a valid address. There is some benefit with this tiered star topology. Firstly, the power to each device can be monitored or even suspended if an overcurrent condition occurs without disturbing other devices on the network. We can also have low speed and high speed USB devices on the same network with no problem. All components of a USB system connect to each other using one of the USB specified cables and connectors. There are different types of USB connectors grouped into host and device connectors. The A connector faces the host like a computer and the B connector faces the device like a printer or an Arduino board for example. To reduce the size of the connectors, there are USB mini and USB micro connectors. The USB type C packs 24 pins into the USB connector. Unlike the previous versions, this version is reversible, meaning the USB connector can be inserted either way. There is basically no wrong way you can plug a USB type C cable. This allows also for current above 500 milliamp for your device. But depending upon the mode of operation, all of the signals may not be needed. This new type C is becoming the standard for many new devices like laptops and phones. The USB Implementers Forum, a non-profit corporation founded by the group of companies that develop the USB specifications, are responsible for updating and approving the USB specifications, including the protocols, speeds, connectors, and power distributions used by USB systems. In terms of speed, USB has five supported speeds, each with a slightly different protocol and frame format. The USB 1.0 has low speed with data transfer rate of 1.5 megabit per second and the full speed at 12 megabit per second. The USB 2.0 allows high speed of 480 megabit per second. Now with USB 3.0, you can reach 5 gigabit per second and with super speed plus with usb 3.1 you can go up to a whopping 10 gigabit per second when connecting devices with different usb versions the data transfer rate will be limited by the slowest of the connected devices for example if you connect a usb 2.0 device to a usb 1.0 device the data transfer will occur at 12 megabit per second even though the USB 2.0 device is capable of transferring data at 480 megabit per second. The USB host can also supply power to the USB devices, eliminating the need of the device to have its own power supply. The USB specifications also provide for battery charging specifications to allow a USB host to charge the battery of the device. In USB 1 and 2 mode, the host can supply a maximum of 500 milliamp of current at 5 volt, while in 3.0 or 3.1 it can supply up to 900 milliamp. Type C systems are capable of supplying more power with up to 3 amp when using the new Type C cable. USB has got many advantages, that's why it's very popular nowadays. Firstly, USB is hot pluggable. You can plug your USB device to your computer and it will be detected by your operating system immediately. No need to reboot your computer. USB is plug and play. Again, once you plug your USB device, the operating system will recognize it and load the appropriate driver for it if available. No need to configure it manually. USB support many devices up to 127. The distance can go up to 3 or even 5 meters in length. USB allows for low-cost devices 
and for most of the devices consuming from about 100 milliamp to 500 milliamp you won't even need an additional power supply for them they can be powered from the usb host usb also has a robust error detection a malfunctioning usb device can be electrically removed from the bus without affecting others the host can also instruct a device to enter a suspend state which reduces the maximum power consumption to 500 microamp the usb is also a high speed bus with low speed of 1.5 megabit per second and currently up to 10 gigabit per second with usb 3.1 super speed plus now if you look at the disadvantages usb is a very complex protocol to implement compared to usart spi or i squared c protocols where you could simply add the peripheral interface to your project with some few library codes or even by accessing the registers directly by reading the datasheet. With USB, it's really different. You need to write your code off the USB framework, otherwise you'll really have a huge mountain to climb. USB is an order of magnitude more complicated than the other peripherals. It must be constantly serviced to maintain a connection to the host. USB is not also a free protocol. If you implement your own device, fees may apply. Every USB device product line is required to have a unique combination of VID and PID number that you need to buy. Let us look at USB device classes. The functionality of USB devices is defined by class code. Device classes enable the same device driver to be used for several devices having similar functionalities. This allows the USB host to load suitable software driver for each connected device. This provides for adaptability and device independence of the host to support new devices from different manufacturers. The table below shows the currently defined set of base class values, what the generic usage is and where that base class can be used. The class 1 is used for USB audio devices like sound card, speaker or microphone. For communication class or CDC, the PIC microcontroller looks like a modem, Ethernet adapter or terminal connected to a COM port. The HID is used for devices like keyboard, mouse or joystick. We've got also the physical, the image, the printer for printers, the mass storage for devices like memory card, external hard drive or digital cameras. We've got the hub, we've got the CDC data, the smart card, the personal health care. For devices like thermometer, blood pressure, or glucose meter, we've got the audio video devices, we've got diagnostic devices, wireless devices, and we've got also the vendor specific, which is a custom class for vendors to use as they please. You can learn more about these device classes from this USB implementer forum website. As we have said earlier on, the USB protocol is very complex. In this tutorial, we're not going to discuss in detail this protocol. There are many resources online and books covering this topic in detail. Microchip supplies a full portfolio of USB enabling products, including devices, hubs, transceivers, and power controller. Some PIC 16F1 and PIC 18F series can be used as USB devices. USB devices are peripherals that can be attached to a USB host like a PC. Typical devices include products such as keyboard, mice, or medical devices. Some PIC24, DSPIC, PIC32MM, PIC32MX, and PIC32MZ series can be used as both device or host. A host controls all communication within the system. The host sends communication requests and devices respond. Devices do not initiate data transfer event. In the past, nodes in USB networks operated in other device or host mode. The current change roles. USB on the go or OTG and USB V3 and above provide the ability for a node to change roles from device to host and vice versa. For example, you might need to connect a USB flash drive to your phone. With an OTG cable, your phone will act as a host, while it can also act as a device when it's connected to a PC. Currently, Flowcode V9 support USB HID, USB MIDI, USB Serial, and USB Slave devices. 
to add a component you can either edit your system panel or to your dashboard it's gonna add a standard usb device on the system panel these are the properties flow code makes it really super simple to use a usb device if you right click and click on help device it's gonna open a wiki page where you can learn more how to use this component uh, there are also some few examples that can get you started quickly. Uh, we've got also a descriptions of different component macros, how you can use this component quickly. So you can do the same for other devices classes. Like for example, the USB serial, you can just edit, open the wiki page and learn more how you can use this component as well. And do the same thing right click click help and it's gonna open that same wiki page here you're gonna have also some few examples uh, we got usb serial simple receive usb serial driver this is the driver that you can use so that your usb device can be detected by your operating system uh, so you can go through everything so basically it's so simple to use USB uh, with flow code. Everything is just straightforward. This is the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to start with USB serial. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future. If you've got a question, don't hesitate to leave a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.